Hey guys, Zach Allen here. I'm going to do a quick tutorial on the I.O. setup dialog in Pro Tools. Yes, the dreaded I.O. setup. The one that all the musicians and non-engineering people fear to death. Um, it's really not that complicated. Basically what you're doing is you're drawing a map of your particular interface that you have. So say your interface has two analog inputs, two analog outputs, and four digital outputs. Uh, you just go in and draw it in, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's get right to it. Okay, so here is a session. I recorded this at a studio downtown on Music Row, and this is the first time I'm opening this session at a different studio. So there's some interesting things going on. For one, it's grayed out, and I don't really know why, and, you know, I can't set any inputs or outputs. Everything's just kind of weird. I can set buses. Those are all right, but everything's kind of weird. So what happens pretty regularly is, basically... Pro Tools is recognizing your new interface, and it recognizes those inputs and outputs, but a lot of times it doesn't. And a lot, most of the time, though, it'll recognize the new inputs and outputs, and it'll keep the old ones. So there you have a lot of wasted space. Like, okay, like all these extra three, four, five, six, all this kind of stuff, you know. Uh, the best way to do this is I'm just going to start from scratch and let's just get rid of everything. Let's just, you know, I don't want to see any inputs, any outputs, anything. So let's start with this input tab. First things first, if you do not see your interface labeled right here, then you've got a problem, you've got a bad cable, you need to restart your interface, restart Pro Tools, something's wrong. I have an Apogee Ensemble. It is recognizing my Apogee Ensemble. It recognizes that I have 10 analog inputs available. I have 8 digital optical inputs available. You go to the Output tab, same thing. 10 uh, analog outs, 8 optical outs, right? Easy enough. But right now, if I press OK and just leave this whole thing blank, I can't assign an output, I can't assign a bus, I can't assign an input because there's none available. I have to map the, the input and outputs of the ensemble. So how do you do that? Well, let's start. First of all, you can just press at any point the default button and it gets you your 128 stereo buses back. That's pretty standard, you know, at least as a starting point um, for mixing and stuff to set up effects and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's that. Let's start now over with the input tab. What I'm going to do basically is I'm going to create a default so that I can save it and from here on out I can just delete everything, import settings down here, and then just have it ready. Since I have all of these available, I might as well utilize them, right? So let's do five stereo pass, right? and it's already mapped because I checked those boxes since you saw that let's just start there okay so now I can set input one left right well that's not very that's pretty confusing right and let's let's simplify it some since we know this is stereo input and it's input one and two let's call this one dash two right and then the subpath, instead of 1, 2, left, right, let's just call it 1. And let's just call this 2. And see, they're mono paths. Make sure these are checked right here. Otherwise, you know, they won't show up as mono paths. Okay, same deal here. Let's go to 3, sorry, 4, 5, 6. Right? Um, 
same thing. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, ten. Now, look at that. Boom, one through ten. And those are on a mono track. Then if you go to a stereo track, it's a stereo in. Nice and neat, makes sense. Beautiful for everybody. So that's that. That way I'm maximizing my system. Um, let's go ahead and even though I don't use them, Let's go ahead and fill in these opticals. So we're all set on our inputs. We're in good shape. Now, we're set here because we've got our internal buses. So let's do a lot of the same for this guy. We'll create, I guess, nine stereo outputs. I'm maximizing my system. I'm going to call this monitor just because that way I can say I know where to monitor. That's all filled. Now what's interesting is you go into the buses and all of a sudden you have all of this labeled and you want to make sure that this is checked mapping to output so let's just press OK and let's see what we got now voila there is everything oh I need to relabel all those because they're not they're messy but the point is they're there all of a sudden so let's go back and let's tidy this up a little bit All right, so there's that. And there we go. That's what we want to see, nice and pretty. So back here, I'm going to do one more thing since I actually use my optical outputs for my headphone system. So I'm going to call this headphone one, two, and so forth. When you do that, same thing. And there it is. Bam. Okay. A couple more things. Say, let's, let's go ahead and output all this now to where we can hear it. See how all of a sudden everything's active. Let's say, just real basic, we want to set up a verb. Say we're mixing. Okay, so let's go, sorry. Let's drag this over here, and let's just call this track real generic verb, right? Um, so it needs to be out here. Here's your vocal, and we want to put some verb on it. So let's use this first bus here. I use this a lot in mixing, and it helps. And let's just pick a verb. Assign the inputs. As you get going in the mix, it can get kind of confusing when bus one and two is going to this verb and bus three and four is going to this effect. So, as I'm mixing, one thing I do is as soon as I set up a new effect, I just right click 
and rename the bus from here and I'll just call this verb and then it changes there, changes there and then you go back to the IO and it conversely will change here so it's no longer one and two, it is now verb and you can do that all day, it's not uncommon for me to have 50 some effects so that's pretty cool um, and then lastly say you go and you want to import some audio and say you want to listen to it before oh you need to have a valid audition path and IO setups very simple you go up to audition paths and let's set that to monitor now let's do the same thing magic and finally so now we've got it labeled laid out just how we want it and let's export settings and I want to call these Studio Z tracking Let's do this. I'm going to pull this session back up. This is the last thing. I still got my old. Okay, it saved it. Let's get rid of everything. And so now I want to import Studio Z tracking. There it is. There's this. And you have to do it for each window for some reason. Hmm. I should have deleted unused paths, that's what it was. But there you have it. And then you can start from scratch. So it's a really good idea when you're opening the session for the first time. Just go in and delete everything. What especially once you have your template set and then you won't have those extra inputs, outputs, everything will be laid out the way it needs to be. That's all for my I.O. setup tutorial. Feel free to email me at Zach, Z-A-C-H, at RedArmorProductions.com if you have any more questions or, you know, comments or, you know, keep on rocking, guys. Thanks so much.